Parliament debate status of Karawagi MP. Nama says Speaker's action is in contempt of court. And Patrick Parach is opposition's candidate for PM. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for National MTV News. Another twist in the court-ordered parliament sitting this morning. Parliament reconvened at 11 a.m. today, one hour after the set time ordered by the Supreme Court. However, the sitting was adjourned to Wednesday, 16th December at 10 a.m. after Speaker Job Pomat questioned the status of Karawagi MP Bari Palmer as a member of parliament. The turn of events on the floor of parliament this morning were highly unpredictable. As anticipated by many, the government would discuss the 2021 national budget. And as predicted by many also, the opposition would initiate the process for the vote of no confidence. However, both did not occur this morning. Instead, Speaker Job Pomat began this session with an apology for his decision to recall Parliament to sit on the 17th of November. Based on this decision, the court, me like talking people, the Papa New Guinea also, me sorry through. Me sorry through the decision, me walk him, I make him this plan. People, blow me blow manos, me sorry through. All voters, all supporters, now all the line, me sorry straight. After the apology, the speaker continued on to announce that he wished to seek legal clarification from the judiciary on who should execute a decision from the courts that an MP should be suspended or reinstated in parliament. It is my intention to refer this matter to the appropriate authority, whether it is the Supreme Court or National Court for adjudication. I cannot be seen to be observing the power of the judiciary to make an unliteral decision on the status of the honorable member for Karawagi. However, the speaker was interrupted through a point of order by opposition leader Belden Nama, who had a copy of a second court order that nullified Palmer's insolvency. Larry Mempinis, order. Order past them. My point of order, Mr. Speaker, is there is a latest court order that has been served on your clerk, and I believe your clerk has served on you, annulling the insolvency of the Honorable Barry Palmer, the member for Kerouagi. That order... Order. That order. Order. And, and uh, Mr. Speaker, I seek leave of the parliament to tender. I seek leave of the parliament to tender these court orders. Police Minister Brian Kramer also raised a point of order, objecting the request of the opposition side to tender the court order in parliament. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, section order. 155 of the constitution say no says, wait, says no process issued by any court in the exercise of its civil jurisdiction shall be served or executed through the speaker. This law paper you got, you know what meaning of time you will sit. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I also point the order against the proposition for the opposition to talk for, to call for a vote because we have a stranger in the house. We cannot vote. <laughs> This led to more shouting between members of both sides, forcing the Speaker to call the House to order. Opposition nominee for Prime Minister, Patrick Purides, through a point of order, said the Speaker should not confuse Parliament and should seek proper legal advice before making a decision. Speaker, this prime work below you, you need to seek legal advice. You don't have to come and lecture member of Parliament. Right. You got court decision, you seek him legal advice, you've got sufficient counsels in parliament or you can outsource that for them to advise you. You no know, need lo, you come. You no know, need lo, you come now you confuse in parliament. Please. Thank you. 
When Parliament resumes on Wednesday at 10 a.m., the first order of business would be to determine if the Karawagi MP would sit in for the session. However, that depends again on the legal advice from the judicial arm. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. The opposition has finally decided who their candidate is for the Prime Minister's seat after days of deliberation between member for Bulolo Sembaso and member for Itapelumi Patrick Puraj. The announcement was made after Speaker adjourned Parliament to Wednesday 16th of December. Charmaine Porembe reports. The opposition has announced today that the National Alliance Party leader and member for Aitape Lumi, Patrick Pruaj, is their candidate for the Prime Minister's seat when the vote of no confidence process is initiated. Today uh, marks another uh, historical day in our country. And I want to thank the uh, members of the opposition, uh, actually the members of the new government of Papua New Guinea. Uh, we want to... Firstly, announced today that uh, we have uh, our nominee for as the alternative prime minister, the nominee for prime ministership, in the uh, Honourable uh, Patrick Pryce, the, le the leader of the uh, National Alliance Party. Soon after that announcement by the opposition leader, the media was allowed to capture the signing of the motion of the vote of no confidence. A total of 16 MPs signed the motion paper. He is the first uh, signatory. Uh, look, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the support by the Team 55. We have been together for four solid weeks. And I want to point out to you, members of the media, that among these groups, this is the group that will save Papua New Guinea. Patrick Proich was first elected into the 7th National Parliament in the 2002 general elections as an independent candidate and later joined the National Alliance Party. He has held several major portfolios in the Somaria Marad government, the O'Neill-Dion government and recently, before switching sides, was the Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Trade with the Marape government. The government is here. We are following the process to ensure that um, we comply with the uh, vote of no, no confidence uh, processes and I think by the 24th we want to make sure we conclude the process and uh, provide a Christmas present for Papua New Guineans. Thank you. While the passing of the 2021 budget is further delayed, Patrick Pruitt said they still have time. The opposition indicates that it is also a priority to them. Section 212 provides for a government to spend one third of previous year's budget. So that provision is still available to us. Uh, but we will endeavor to <coughs> ensure that we deliver a budget uh, immediately uh, for the country. The opposition filed the motion of vote of no confidence this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. Effectively, it will be served to the Speaker of Parliament and to the Clerk of Parliament. If all necessary formalities are followed, the motion will then go through the Private Business Committee for further deliberation. The committee, which is chaired by the Speaker, will see whether the motion will go through Parliament or not. The current Private Business Committee was appointed by the opposition on November 13, 2020, when few government MPs moved to the opposition and overruled the government, taking lead of of the government businesses on that day. Chamin Poreambev, National MTV News. Opposition leader Belden Nama said the Speaker's actions today in Parliament is a clear contempt of court and parliamentary processes. His comments were supported by Alatao MP Charles Abel, who also called for the Prime Minister to respectfully resign. The opposition team says this is a clear demonstration of fear displayed by the government. 
and I want to call on the speaker to resign. Because his behavior has demonstrated that he has got no uh, respect for the chair. And the way he, he handled the honorable member for Kerouac's uh, case, the honorable uh, Barry Palmer, when there is an order of the court of the 11th of December annulling his insolvency, he is, of course, the seventh member of parliament. Uh, we do understand the uh, tactic that is uh, employed by uh, the minority government. And uh, there is a clear demonstration on the floor of parliament that the executive is encroaching into the legislature by influencing the speaker. It appeared today again another attempt to frustrate the process. The prime minister is talking about presenting the budget. He's, he's telling, calling on us to show our numbers. We are attempting to do so, but are being continually frustrated. Why is that? I ask the question. It is simply because the government does not have the numbers. It is a minority government. Yeah. It has yeah. lost the mandate in parliament. It cannot pass the budget. The Prime Minister should, as such, we call again, he should resign. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more of the day's stories after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Western Highlands mission of the Seventh-day Adventist denomination has officially opened its state-of-the-art church. The occasion was held yesterday at Kimininga in Mount Hagen. It was built at a cost of 4 million kina and took the people 25 years to turn their dream into a reality. Pastor Natayama with this report. Kimininga, as the it said, Sammy, officially opened, we can go inside too. Amen. 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 It was a joyous moment for the Kimininga SDA Church members. They had tears of joy as they celebrated the church opening with pioneers who also came to witness the occasion. But in the middle of all these leaders, you got the old mama is the holy pray, holy cook, holy walking market, come up with money come. Plant is support and we come out like you become the most dedicated, God and Baptist and God. The old Kimininga SDA church was built in the 1960s and was decommissioned in August 2010. It took 15 years of planning and raising funds and 10 years of building the church that culminated in the opening yesterday. May I assist this opportunity to challenge our young people to live the dreams of our pioneers. To look in your blood, mind them all. That one day you come as load inside a conducive environment like this. From the settlement, you come up, one of them up, where one of them give you walk, look at you come to contribute, look at you come to walk it, look at it is the sacrifice for people to walk it today. This 4 million kina house of worship was built by the church project offering from locals as well as offering from Adventists throughout PNG. The project wasn't an easy journey for the ordinary church members. Most of them mothers who worked to sell their market produces and contributed immensely towards the church building. Prices of goods and, goods and services have just and go, and, and go under threat. But regardless of that, God's people were faithful in supporting the work of God. The church consists of a 200 capacity holding space, conference room, kitchen, control room, ablution blocks, and a few others. Time may come out long, contribution long, forget for you yet, me to you play it. Now it may take him years, you by value it. This for the years to come. PNG Union Mission President Pastor Malakayani officiated at the ceremony and extended an invitation to people from all walks of life to come to church. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. 
The Police Northern Division has begun preparing its section commanders for the 2022 general elections. With support from the Australian government, mobile squad commanders were trained in interagency cooperation and command and control. National elections have always proven expensive and risky. The RPNGC hopes to mitigate risks by improving its approach. Mobile squads have always been relied upon to provide the backbone of policing in the most demanding situations in Papua New Guinea. But for the last 15 years, there hasn't been any command and control training for section commanders on the front line. In preparation for the 2022 elections, the Northern Division, with support from the Australian Federal Police, have embarked on training that will prepare the police for the operation. So it will help in, in, in major operations where members can be able to write operation orders and they can read the operation orders and understand operation orders and define, uh, define operation orders. The first mobile squad was established as a unit between 1965 and 1966 in Port Moresby and that was in response to pre-independence tensions in the East New Britain. The unit was based in the Keeler Barracks in Port Moresby and also attended to trouble hotspots in the Highlands. Their work has also demanded close cooperation between the PNG Defence Force, Customs, District Administrations and Provincial Governments. It's not coordinating to effectively and successfully uh, achieve what we will want to achieve at the end of the day. Scott Whitey, National MTV News, Lay. While the NGOs and government organizations have been in the forefront of implementing the WASH project in Goroka, partnering with churches is an important aspect of the project. Local pastor Alkin Orona, who has been part of the team inspecting the WASH project, says churches also need to take ownership of this project as they have influence in communities. The, church, uh, the toilet speaks for itself. Pastor Alkin Orona and Lita IP represent the pastors fraternal in Goroka. They have been part of the WASH Clean Pella Community's external verification team, doing inspections on the project in the communities. Pastor Orona says while visiting the communities, he has seen that educating church members on health and hygiene is a role that churches must take up. We can continue uh, to go and uh, bring this, uh, this awareness back to the church again so that the church can, you know, take this and, you know, we become the implementers in our own congregation, in our own churches. Me plus have a son up, me plus a talk talk long, all man by kiss him life. But health, me plan us up, talk talk long, plan something. Me plus a talk talk inside spiritually. Since implementing partners started working with communities in Goroka, there has been a decline in waterborne diseases in these communities. While NGOs have been in the forefront implementing the project, Partners in the district authority have also been involved. One of the ward councillors, Billy Arau, said the WASH Clean Pillar Community Project has brought changes to communities. Expression, Bolman, talk, talk, Bolman. If it's some black communities, all man, all cry. Literally, tears will be put down. No looking this last thing is the simple things that only low health, a lifestyle, low improvement, as well in general community, people said tears. With more than 30 already declared as health promoting communities, there is still more work to be done. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Goroka. And now looking at the NASFAND market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3628 Australian dollars, 0.2203 Euro and 28.17 Japanese Yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher and copra closed higher. Crude oil is trading higher, palm oil closed lower and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher, and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues with more after these messages. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the news. A new high school has been launched in Rigo Inland Central Province to cater for the growing number of grade 8 school leavers in the area. Former Central Governor and PNG Defense Force Commander Ted Dero, who officiated at the occasion last Friday, said it is time Rigo Inland people had their own high school to impart knowledge upon their students. It was revealed during the launching ceremony that under the leadership of now decommissioned Minister for Education Joseph Yopi Yopi, the Education Department allocated 50,000 kina to help build the new high school. Located in the mountains of Rigo District, the former primary school will soon be turned into a high school that will alleviate issues of parents of grade 8 school leavers in the area, sending their children to Quikila Secondary School or Hood Point every year. With the local community and education department showing support in upgrading the school, prominent figures from the area such as former Central Governor and PNG Defence Force Commander Ted Dero have come on board to offer support. I'm going to donate to build a church for the school here. Uh, whether it's 600,000 upwards, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Uh, I want to, I would like you to uh, don't call it the Ted Dero Memorial Church. I'd like you to call it the Reverend Percy Slinka Memorial Church. With a primary school in NCD already named after him, Ted Dero wants to also provide funding to build a chapel in the new high school for students and staff. He said he will do everything in his power to make it a school of excellence in the country. The young people, you must honor your history. Uh, you must honor your mother and father. That is the beginning of the index of loyalty support. Jonathan Davai, who represented the education department at the occasion, reiterated the department's commitment of 50,000 kina towards the building of the new high school and encouraged young people in the area to give their very best. It's important that we invest in our schools. <clears throat> this community needs more doctors. This community needs nurses. This community needs more teachers. Yeah. That's the only way we can develop. That is the only way where we can bring development back into our communities. The school was first established in 1997 with the aim of providing primary education for students in a remote location. And after a number of attempts to hold the official launching ceremony for the school's upgrade to a high school being unsuccessful, the ceremony was finally held with people attending from the surrounding communities. Denis Orere, National MTV News. And turning overseas, a million doses of the COVID vaccine are now arriving in cities across America ready for tomorrow when the first patients will get their jabs. There are calls for Joe Biden to be among the first vaccinated so Americans can be reassured it's safe because developments were rushed. Tonight, delivering hope. The best weapon in the fight against the pandemic touched down in Louisville around noon on board this UPS Boeing 757. Captain Houston Mills flew the first batch of Pfizer vaccine. Have you flown cargo this important? I've never had the uh, honor of being part of something this big. For every package is a person, we always say, in this instance, it's a life-saving vaccine that can make a difference in someone's life. The massive delivery effort kicking off today will be divided between UPS and FedEx, each handling half of the U.S. Tonight, UPS is moving half of Pfizer's initial 2.9 million doses. The approximately 75 specially designed cold boxes of vaccine, each with GPS and temperature tracking, started the day at Pfizer's Michigan plant, rolling out with an escort of U.S. Marshals. 
Upon landing in Kentucky, they were unloaded for sorting and will fly out tonight, bound for more than 30 cities by morning, allowing vaccinations to start as soon as Monday. The vaccines will get they'll get the first priority on the aircraft, first priority on 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 the uh, on the package car when it goes to to the to the final destination. Pfizer expects to ship 20 million doses this month. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar on Face the Nation defended the pace of the rollout. Why the decision not to be more aggressive out of the gate? We're being very aggressive. We're shipping all that we have that we, while we're holding back a reserve for the second dose. Beginning Monday, UPS plans to start driving some of the vaccine from Michigan to here in Kentucky, where it will be distributed, put onto planes and flown to states across the country within 24 hours of it leaving that Pfizer plant into arms of Americans not long after it arrives. Andrew Guy Sports is next. Fidley Sukina has the details. Thank you, Helen. We'll have news on rugby league cricket, softball. Join me after the break. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Yesterday saw the conclusion of the second week of finals for the Port Mosby Rugby Football League. With the festive season catching up to the competition, the plan is to have midweek matches for the teams in the finals to determine the grand finalists. Paul Marafel is expecting to host the grand final this Sunday. The festive season is gaining on the Port Mosby Rugby Football League and the competition is aiming to have the grand final this week before the Christmas weekend next week. With a short season this year, teams have made it their business to play on in a shortened format of the season. We are hoping to have the grand finals in a week's time from now. Uh, that will mean that our final preliminary week of finals will ask the clubs, the remaining clubs to play it over midweek so that we can clear the grand final on the 19th, which is the Sunday. The plan is to have midweek matches for the teams in the finals to determine the grand finalists. It will take some convincing, but Paul Marafel says it's the best option to have a competitive grand final. I am trying to um, convince them uh, if we take the games into Christmas or after Christmas, Christmas activities, drinking, eating, all that, and the, the mood of the games will be lost, the fitness building up will be lost, and uh, we might see substandard grand final. On Sunday, the quarterfinals in the men's under 20 saw a tough hit out between the Coney Storms in blue and the Butterflies in white and green. A tough match which went down to the wire with the Storms too strong for the Butterflies edging them 14 points to 10. In the women's grand final qualifier, it was hot favorites the Paga Panthers in blue against sisters in the Dragons colors in a fight for the first grand final spot of the competition. The sisters showed positive signs of a strong fight back, but the Paga Panthers women were too strong and played to their strengths with a convincing 26 points to 4 victory. In the men's A grade, the Paga Panthers and Souths went into a do or die match eager for a win to keep their finals hopes alive. But it was Paga Panthers who managed to edge the Souths 14 points to 10 in a hard fought win. In other results from Saturday, in the under 20 division, Coney Tigers 4 defeating Tarangau nil. In the women's division, the South's women team 14 beat Royals 10. And in the A grade, Butterflies 22 beat defending Premier's brothers 18 in extra time. Administrator of Poma RFL, Meke Maino, was grateful for the support shown by the Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League chairman, Sandy Saka as well, who had been showing tremendous support to Poma RFL. Mr. Sandy Saka for his support to this year's short competition. Uh, by way of making generous donations towards the uh, Player of the Match Awards, uh, 20 kina to the player charged best from the winning team and 10 kina to the player charged from the losing team. I would like to, on behalf of the uh, chairman of the Port Moresby Rugby League Board, the entire board and uh, the 14 clubs, also our sponsor, I would like to say a word of thanks to Mr. Sandy Saka. Meke also thanked SPPNG Hunters coach Matthew Church for his donations towards the competition. I would like to also thank uh, Matthew Church, the SPPNG Hunters coach, 
for making timely, generous donations of uh, uh, ISC, ISC conversion sheds to the presidents and some officials, including the board, as well as uh, training balls, which we gave out to the clubs to help them with their preparations. The International Cricket Council has announced a qualification pathway to the ICC Under-19 Men's Cricket World Cup in 2022 in the West Indies. 33 teams will compete for five World Cup spots. Australia, England, New Zealand, Pakistan are four of the 11 automatically qualifying teams by virtue of their top 11 finish in the 2020 edition. The remaining five spots will be determined by regional qualification. Mosby Men's Softball Association completed round two of the new season over the weekend at the Bissini Diamonds. The season was shortened, affecting the participation of two teams, Yokomo and Saints. The Bissini Diamonds came alive once again as the Port Mosby Men's Softball Association headed into round two of the new season last weekend. With the challenging circumstances surrounding COVID-19 this year, Competition officials had to work closely with the Bicini Sports Precinct Venue Management to ensure that the season's competition would commence. Well, it's, it's delayed the preparations by uh, maybe three of the extra three weeks. Uh, we had to get the permission from the sports, uh, the venue management before we could actually come and play. So uh, our preseason started off and was shortened because of that. And, uh, uh, the season proper was delayed by another week as well. Too. A less than ideal start to the competition resulted in a shortened pre-season, affecting the participation of two clubs, Yokomo and Saints. This was followed by a slow start to the B-grade matches in Round 1, but a strong showing from A-grade teams ensured a decent start to the competition. There has been one club that has withdrawn. Um, Yokomo has withdrawn for the year. Uh, and uh, for the preseason, I think the Saints um, just didn't take part in the preseason, but they're taking part in the season proper now. So, the following A grade results Defense 8 defeated Killer Cats 0, United Brothers 7 defeated Mariners 0, Power 8 defeated Aviat Jets 2, Saints 13 defeated Stingers 5, Bears 9 defeated Gazelle 4. The first round. We were fairly quiet, especially in the big grade, but the A grade, most of the A grade teams turned up for last week's games and uh, again this week as well. So, Haxilovai, Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports continues with basketball, cricket, and sailing abroad. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. And welcome back to Chukai Sports, to Sports Abroad. It's the first NBA super team built by a Kiwi. The Brooklyn Nets saw star recruits team up for the first time in a preseason game. Irving and Durant, a $430 million tag team and a super team built by Kiwi general manager Sean Marks. Along with a solid supporting cast, the Nets are expected to do some serious damage this season. Irving step back, jumper is smooth. Here's Durant to the rim, powers it down. Kevin Durant playing his first game in 552 days after tearing his Achilles with Golden State. He and Kyrie Irving combined for 33 points in today's preseason game against Washington. It's good to just go through this stuff again, man, you know, and, and I watch film tomorrow and just keep going. Marks has also brought in two friends from his playing days in Phoenix, new coach Steve Nash, a two-time MVP, and 47-year coaching veteran Mike D'Antoni as his assistant. All right, Dan Tony running the offense for his former point guard, Steve Nash. You know, guys are looking forward to the season, looking forward, they look forward to the day, and we came out here to have a solid showing. <laughs> showing that has brought some excitement back to a city that hasn't had an NBA title in almost 50 years. And all with a special Kiwi calling the shots behind the scenes. The Black Caps have fallen just short of a piece of Kiwi cricket history 
after easing to a test series win over the West Indies. Chasing top spot and the world rankings for the very first time, they missed out. Despite that, they remain on track for a place in, a, in the World Test Championship final. Ah, oh, there it goes, Neil Wagner! It is 50th test match. The Black Caps needed just over an hour on day four to complete a ruthless victory by an innings and 12 runs. Yeah, I think clinical is, is probably a good word to use for it. They're, they're very good in their conditions. Needing just four wickets for victory, Tim Southey got the home side off to the perfect start in his first over of the day. Southey does it again, as he so often does. From there, it was a procession. The beating at the base and extending the Black Caps' unbeaten run to a record 15 straight tests on home soil, dating back to 2017. We certainly know how to, how to play in these conditions, which is great. It's a win that's seen the Black Caps come desperately close to toppling Australia at the top of the ICC test rankings for the first time. It's a pretty special thing, I think. Um, from, from our point of view, it's something we've actually never talked about. And it's form like this, the Kiwis are hoping will take them all the way to Lords next year as they eye a spot in the Test Championship final. They must beat Pakistan in the upcoming Test Series to keep that dream alive. Our focus will certainly shift to, shift to Pakistan and then uh, whatever happens uh, post that, then, then we'll assess. But yeah, the the goal at the start of the Test Championship was to, to get to that final. And if recent results are anything to go by, you certainly can't rule it out. To the America's Cup now, and with the start of the Cup Regatta three days away, there are major concerns for the British Challenge. For the British team today, finally back out on the water after boat problems have left them high and dry in the past week. But while they haven't been able to get out onto the water, the team did get wet via some sweat after a game of touch rugby with All Black legend Dan Carter. He shared his experiences of high pressure sporting situations and talked in great length about the uh, the Rugby World Cup t final in, in 2015 and how he dealt with that pressure. So uh, every cloud has a silver lining, I guess. With the speeds these boats are travelling, there's no doubt team members will be under pressure to work together like never before. We just had a lot of questions to him around uh, the culture within the All Blacks and not only as the sort of starting 15, but the wider group. And a lot of those lessons translate over to us as a safe team and then into the design group as well. We'll get to see just what impact Carter's had on this British team on Thursday, although Carr believes teams won't be showing their hand completely during the four-day Christmas regatta. I think the racing that we'll see next week, you'll see people sailing around at sort of 90, 95%. Carr's confident they're on track despite their technical problems. But it's safe to say we'll stick to sailing and not kicking rugby balls. We were useless at that. Ineos Team UK hoping some local knowledge can help them bring the old mug back to Britain for the first time in over 100 years. That story wraps up Trukai Sports. Helen will be back with the weather report for the next 24 hours. Bye for now. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Fine weather tonight and tomorrow in Port Moresby. Light rain drizzles tonight. Fine, partly cloudy weather tomorrow in Daru. Rain drizzles tonight and tomorrow in Kerama. A few showers and drizzles tonight, then a cloudy day tomorrow in Alatau. And few rain showers tonight, fine, partly cloudy weather tomorrow in Popendita. In the Mamasa region, rain drizzles tonight and fine day tomorrow in Leh. A few showers tonight, then a cloudy day tomorrow in Medang. Partly cloudy tonight with morning thundery showers in Wewak and thundery showers tonight, then a cloudy morning in Vanimore. In the New Guinea Islands region, partly cloudy tonight with morning showers in Lorengau and Boka. Few showers tonight, then fine, partly cloudy day tomorrow in Kaviang. Thundery rain showers tonight, then fine, partly cloudy day tomorrow in Kokopo and Rabaul. And thundery rain showers tonight, then cloudy morning in Kimbe. In the Highlands region, rain showers and drizzles tonight, then morning fog in Mount Hagen, Goroka and Kundiawa. 
Thundery rain showers tonight and morning fog in Mendy and Wabeg. Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerama to Yule Island and to Hood Point to Samari Island with waters of eastern and western Milnbay Islands including waters of Samari to East Cape to Cape Fogo through Hue and Gulf to Finchhafen with waters of Finchhafen through Vitias and Dampier Straits to Siasi and Long Islands with waters of Long Island to Karkar Island to Wewak to Aitape to northern PNG Indonesian border and with waters of Manus and its western group of islands including waters of New Ireland to Bougainville and waters of east and west New Britain seas of 0.5 to 1.3 meters. A look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas for the next 24 hours in the Coral Sea. Seas light with southwest winds at 10 to 15 knots in the Solomon Sea. Seas light with west to northwesterly winds at 10 to 15 knots in the Bismarck Sea. Seas light with northwesterly winds at 10 to 15 knots and in the Pacific Ocean. Seas light with northwesterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for today, December 14th, 2020. Just 11 days to Christmas. On behalf of the news team, pleasant viewing. Be safe and bye for now.